Hello and welcome to Cultivating Home. you guys about a subject near and dear to my heart and if you followed me on social media or my blog or anything for any amount of time um, you probably know how much I love to journal and so journaling um, and writing in general has always been something that I really love um, words have had a special place in my heart for as long as I can remember my parents are both um, writers in the sense that my mom was an avid journaler um, she kept a diary for years in different ways um, and her and my father were both really good about writing us letters as kids and writing really heartfelt messages and cards and um, and things like that and I can remember writing I mean the first story I ever remember writing I was in second grade um, and I kept a journal. The earliest one that I have is from third grade, so I can't remember if that's actually when I started or um, if I started before that and I just don't have the journal. But I figure since we're getting ready to close 2020, thank God, um, and 2021 is just around the corner, um, new year, new journal, and so it's a time to start clean, um, with a lot of things, everyone's always making resolutions around the new year. Um, and while sometimes I do that and sometimes I don't, what I almost always do is start a new journal. And so um, today I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about journaling. And if you haven't journaled before, um, we can talk about some different ways that you can go ahead and get started. And so first we'll start with the rules of journaling. Um, in my opinion, there are no rules. Um, I think a person should journal whenever inspiration strikes, whenever something happens that you never want to forget, um, whenever something happens that you really just need to get out. I encourage you, if you've never journaled, um, to pick up a notebook and a pen and start this year. Some people will um, set a time when they journal. Um, I don't like to do that either. Like I said, I just kind of like to do it whenever inspiration strikes, whenever I feel like writing, whenever there's something I feel like I need to put down on paper and have forever. Um, and so there are no rules. The only rule is to get started. So once someone decides that they want to start journaling, the first question they'll ask themselves is what kind of notebook or journal do I start with? And so the answer to that is the one you'll use. Um, this varies between person to person. Um, some people like very beautiful journals. Um, and I know because I can speak from experience with this. I, I love a beautiful journal with nice, smooth paper. Um, and you know these decorative covers or things like that but um, one thing that I do find myself doing is I'll save the journal um, my husband bought me um, a couple years ago this beautiful leather journal with a lock and a key and it's so pretty and I've had journals like that in the past that I've used but for some reason this one felt special and so it was kind of intimidating to just open it and start scribbling in it and so it sat neatly on my shelf um, for several years now. And I, I do that with different types of journals. Um, paper blanks, I don't know if you've ever heard of the company Paper Blanks. They're some of my favorite notebooks. And I do use them a lot, um, but there are certain ones that are just too pretty for me to write in yet. So I haven't used them yet. I'm waiting for some big idea or um, something really special to put in them. But they, I have a tendency to kind of hoard those really nice journals. 
And um, the ones that I really find myself writing in without even thinking twice about it are the moleskin journals. And they're a little more expensive than your typical notebook. Um, I'd say they're less expensive than paper blanks, but there's something about a moleskin notebook. They're very simple covers. Um, they're either um, you know tan or gray or black, and most of them are paper covers, at least those are the ones that I use in my traveler's notebooks. Um, and I can fill up a moleskin notebook in no time. Um, I also sometimes just write in regular composition notebooks or spiral bound notebooks. So um, the type of journal you use really depends on you. Um, if you're not going to hesitate to pull out that beautiful um, you know, notebook and start writing in it, then get a beautiful notebook. Um, you do want it to be something that you want to spend time in. Um, the only requirement I really have when picking out a journal is that the quality of the paper um, be good because I like good quality paper because I tend to journal with a fountain pen and so um, and sometimes I'll sketch in there in watercolor um, or use markers or something and I want to make sure that I have a paper that doesn't bleed through. Um, so that's really the only um, requirement I have for a journal. And there are different types of journals. So you can get a regular notebook or you can get a gratitude journal. Gratitude journaling has been huge the past few years. I think gratitude journaling is a fantastic thing to do. I love to start my day um, just thinking about the things that I'm grateful for. I even do this with my kids before we start our school day. Um, I have them write down three things that they're grateful for. And um, it's just really nice. I just enjoy doing that. And so there are several different companies that have gratitude journals. Um, one that I've used is May Designs, and I'll put um, links to the notebooks that I'm mentioning in the box below. Um, but May Designs has two options for gratitude journals. One is actually more of a prayer journal, um, but it does include some gratitude pages, I believe, um, or there's space to do gratitude journaling. And then they have an actual gratitude journal. Um, I also designed a prayer journal last year called the Come and Abide Me Prayer Companion. And the way I designed it was that each set of pages also had a small box in the corner um, to write down the things that you're grateful for. So gratitude journaling is one option. Um, another option is bullet journaling. Now I have dabbled in bullet journaling, but it isn't something that I've stuck with consistently. Um, I think mostly because it's just more time consuming than just regular journaling. And I don't usually have tons and tons of time. But that being said, when I have done it, I have loved it. There is something just oddly satisfying about drawing these perfectly straight lines and tracing these little boxes and creating these little um, artful looking pages and coloring in the squares. and. Um, it's just, I, I really do enjoy it. I just don't have the time for it. It doesn't fit into my lifestyle right now. And so it's not something that I've stuck with at any point. Um, another kind of journal for those of you that, are, that might be saying, I really want to journal, but I don't have the time. A great option for you would be the one line a day journals. And these come in several different styles and um, themes and stuff like that. They have a regular one. They have a Jane Austen one. They have a mom's one line a day. Um, I think I've even seen like a gardener's one line a day. And what this journal is, is it's actually a small book, um, but it's thick and it has one line a day for every day of the year for five years. So it's actually a five year journal. And I have done this too. And I, I really enjoyed this. Um, and so you don't have to fill out an entire page. You don't have to write down what you did in detail or whatever. You simply pick one thing from each day that you want to remember. And so you fill that in your one line a day. And it could be something you did that day, something you thought that day, something your children or your husband said that you never want to forget. Um, and so that can be your one line a day. So that's a great option if you really don't think you'll have the time to develop a regular journaling habit. This is a fantastic option. A lot of people like to do their journals more multimedia or scrapbook style. And I've also done this in the past. Um, I like to save ticket stubs or um, tuck in little photos or pressed flowers that the kids picked for me or just little, um, you know, bits of things we've done each day 
or um, not necessarily each day, even just on vacation or while we were outside on our walk or whenever I feel like I have a little something I want to tuck in there to keep. Um, and I really love the way this makes a journal feel. I love opening it up later on and seeing all these little bits and pieces of our past. And so that's another option. Another way you can journal um, is digitally. Now, I personally have never journaled digitally. Um, there are apps that allow you to do it. Um, Notability is one, Penzu is another. Um, there's a lot of different options out there. You can even just use a regular Word document. But um, I personally like the feel of an actual notebook. I love the way a pen glides across a new page. Um, I just, I love having those thick, chunky books by the time I'm done tucked away on the shelf to be pulled out and read later on. Um, and like I said, I like to put little things in there and I like to doodle. And so I personally just love an actual journal. But if you don't or you don't feel like carrying a journal around because you already have a laptop or an iPad you have to carry around, um, journaling digitally is a good option. And so that may be something that you want to look into doing. So once you've decided on what type of journaling you want to do, the next thing you'll do is actually start. And so um, a lot of people do this different ways. I personally like to make it sort of a ritual. It's not something that I do every day. Um, and sometimes I will do it every day and other times I won't journal for weeks. I always try to have a nice hot beverage with me, whether it's coffee in the morning or tea in the afternoon or evening. Um, and I like to light a candle. Sometimes I'll, pay, I'll play very soft music in the background. And I try to do it when I'm by myself. Um, but with three boys, that doesn't always happen. So sometimes the kids are running around and despite them running around and you know the noise and whatever, it doesn't bother me. It's just, I still feel like I'm in my own little place. And even if I just sit down for 15 minutes, um, it's enough. It's enough to get those thoughts out. It's enough to keep up with my journaling and it's enough to just give me that break that I needed. The second benefit of journaling is it really helps you find beauty in the mundane. Um, when you force yourself to sit down and journal and think about the things that happened that you wanna write about, a lot of times you'll realize that you are writing things that you barely even noticed happen when they actually happened. Um, and that's actually a lot of fun. And it helps you appreciate the small things, especially when you um, use descriptive language and you describe the way something tasted or smelled or looked or felt. And so it really helps you draw the beauty out of what would normally be just an ordinary moment that passed. And so um, I really, I feel very grateful after I journal. The third benefit of journaling is it helps you create a more grateful mindset. We talked about gratitude journaling, but when you do this consistently, when you are consistently counting your blessings, when you are consistently looking at all the things in your life that you have to be grateful for, you develop a more grateful mindset because you are more likely to hone in on those things that you're always thinking about. So you get to choose whether those things that you're thinking about are going to be negative or positive. So when you're making a conscientious effort to focus on the positive things in your life, you are going to just naturally develop a more positive mindset. So the fourth benefit of journaling is it also helps sharpen your observational skills. Um, you will be more aware of your surroundings. You will notice things that you might not have noticed before. And the fifth and final benefit um, even though we can talk for hours about the benefits of journaling, but I'll stop it here after five. Um, but it actually, and this doesn't go so much for digital journaling, but the actual act of writing with your hands, it actually, a lot of scientists um, say that it exercises a certain part of our brain that in our technological touchscreen era very rarely gets exercised nowadays. So handwriting is actually almost like a modern day brain game. So thank you guys for watching today's video. Please don't forget to subscribe and like and ring the bell if you want to be notified next time I post a video. We'll see you next time.